is awesome. Welcome to this week's edition of Everything is Awesome. I'm your host, Kev, and this is a show where we sit down and talk to awesome people about awesome things. All right, welcome here to episode 17. We're hitting milestones, people, milestones. This, I, I, mean, I guess 17 isn't a milestone, but we did have two bonus episodes since we last met uh, for our major episode release with Jeff Stormer, episode 16, and that was uh, with 16.3 Core Prime and 16.6 with Howard Eisenberg, two cool people that gave us a short amount of their time uh, that I want to sit down and listen to even more of their awesome stories that they have. And we're going to do our best to get them back on the show at a later date um, and give them the the hour that they deserve or whatever, however long it takes. As you know, we have a lot of two-putters, just like this week's episode is part two of my conversation with Jeff Stormer. Uh, Jeff Stormer is the host of Party of One podcast. It is a one-shot um, podcast tabletop RPG built for two. The host and one player, fantastic podcast. Listen to it if you haven't already. Um, follow him on Twitter at Party of One Pod uh, to get all the basically the updates when the episode releases and all that good stuff. Um, as we said before, um, if for whatever reason you're skipping part one, don't know why. Uh, listen to episode 19. Our radios are dying. That is such a good, good episode. Episode 14, Kingdoms. Another good, fun episode. And then, of course, you got to listen to my episode that I was on. Episode 18, we play a little Doctor Who RPG. Uh, and I can't wait to come back. Uh, we're going to have a, another story with my doctor Uh and on his podcast, uh, we're, we're starting to set up some stuff. It's going to be really, really cool. Uh, and I can't wait to do it anyway. Um, so we're returning last week. We left off with Jeff about to tell us who he'd go watch a DC movie for, uh, without having t- any prior knowledge of what the movie is without any kind of reviews or spoilers. And I'm not going to tell you here. You're going to find that in just a couple moments here on the other end of this intro. Um, I just want to take a moment and thank everyone out there that's been listening to this show. Um, Y'all have made the month of May huge uh, for us, for me. Um, It's probably this borders, um, you know, as far as podcast downloads go, it borders some of the best stuff that I did when uh, Mike and I did OWIT, the unofficial Once Upon a Time pod. Um, and we just keep, it looks like June is climbing even more. So it's really cool. I'm really excited. And that's all thanks to you, the super friends out there. Um, I can't thank you enough for getting more eyes on this show. If you're asking yourself how you can help do that, uh, I'll make it real simple for you. Share it with a friend. Um, send them a text message with a link to the podcast, awesomepodcast.com. Tell them to give a listen, play it in a car when you're on a long car trip. Um, get other people to listen to it. Uh, what helps the most is, is working that iTunes math for us. We say it week in and week out and I hate asking and begging for it. Um, because it's, it's a lot of time. You're probably listening to this in the car. Are you going to remember who knows, but if you do subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, uh, in addition to that, what really helps the iTunes math is leaving five star reviews. Um, they, iTunes has some sort of math that they do. Uh, and the more of those five stars we got and the more of those reviews that we get, uh, we, we get in front of more eyes, more people find us on the show and it's a nice little vicious circle of more people listening, more people reviewing. Uh, and here's why that helps. We are going to have in a few weeks, a very special guest on the show who don't think I'm going to, don't think I'm going to tell you now. I'm not going to upstage Jeff, Jeff from party one podcast. No, check it out on the other end of this episode with Jeff Stormer. The only movie that they will get that from me is the next Batman movie. Like I will, Batman is one of the few that I will always go see, but their track track record with Batman is relatively good, save for the Schumacher years. Um, So they've like, they have goodwill with Batman. I think the only characters, the only property that if they were to say we're making this movie that I would preempt at from at least from DC Comics making movies like their movie department. The only movie that they could get me to preemptively say like 
I'm in. I'm there. Is if they were to just come out and be like, by the way, guys, this Justice League movie we're doing, it's actually going to be Justice League International, so get ready for some Booster Gold I and knew Blue it. Beetle. <laughs> I, I, I knew Booster Gold was going to be what you were going to say. Like, if they, if they just came out and they were like, surprise, <laughs> what a twist. I um see. I'm just. I, do you? So I guess you don't watch The Flash or any of their TV properties. since I, you don't have cable. No, I do. I get CW. We get CW on the air over the okay. air. So yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. So they do that right, man. Like, they really do. I love The Flash. I think The Flash is everything that I want out of a superhero. Oh. And then you got Supergirl. Like, yes! oh my god. Did you Oh, so you saw Did we talk about this last time? Did you see the the crossover episode? I haven't. We fell behind on all of them, but no, but I want to watch it real bad. Oh my god. I I I will not spoil it for you except in saying that it is the most adorable episode of Supergirl and the Flash you will ever see. I'm so excited about to hear that because I love both of those shows like i was smiling the entire time and it was like it similar to to where um your episode 19 our radios are dying uh where i had a couple of those like oh my god eye roll moments where like it was uh like because classic cw kind of dialogue that you guys were having um the it's so adorable where like it's almost embarrassing and you feel embarrassed because of it i know what you mean yeah, so like it was like I smiled and I was almost embarrassed about how much I was smiling. Like I was, that's how cute it was. It, and oh man, I'm in my 30s and I'm using these words. No, I, I get it, man. But, like, like they they Supergirl captures what I love about like the Superman family of comics mm-hmm. in a way that I did like. I had gotten re- like because I'm not I haven't been a fan of what they've been doing in the comics with Superman lately. Okay. And the movies weren't really doing it for me, and I was kind of like, so is this just it now? Like, is this what Superman is in pop culture? Am I just done with? And then Supergirl, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's and it's it's funny because Arrow brought me in to the whole DC TV universe, and. <clears throat> The first couple seasons of Arrow were great, and I still enjoy Arrow. I still See, enjoy. I it. didn't enjoy the first season of Arrow. Like, that's not true. The first half of the first season I thought was really like boring. Mm-hmm. But then once they, as soon as they basically said like halfway through season one, "fuck it," put in an earthquake machine, <laughs> I was like, well, "We're in. I'm in." I I uh, see. I think I had the benefit of binging at least the first season, if not the first two seasons. Um, cause I, I, I didn't, I, when, it, when it came out, I was a Smallville fan. I loved Smallville. So I was upset that they were not linking the universes, uh, with, and they were going a different direction, um, than whoever, Justin Hartley, I think played the arrow before. So, uh, I, I waited a season or two to get into it. And I think it was the fact that they were announcing that the flash was going to be coming. And I was like, all right something about that now that they're doing a universe like i'm in like that's what like that's Mm -hmm. i love marvel because of that Mm -hmm. and so i think i had the benefit with arrow of binging it so like i didn't have time to like digest uh like the episodes that were bad in the beginning uh whereas now like with the arrow i have that time to digest like i don't want to say bad episodes because i don't think i've ever watched an episode of arrow uh, even in the recent seasons where I said, man, that's just bad. There's disappointing episodes, but nothing that's bad in my opinion. Um, but Arrow now out of all, uh, we'll call it the Berlanti universe. Sure. Makes um, sense. that's my least favorite out of all the I, their shows. I agree. I like Arrow and I, I like the news. I've I, well, until we fell off of all of the shows. I liked where Arrow had gone. I liked happy Oliver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked that they finally they took a cue from the Flash and said, oh, "Being a hero is fun." Yeah, yeah. But like, I think it's well, that's not true. I I did not enjoy, and I heard it gets better. But like, I was not into Legends of Tomorrow from what I saw. Oh, really? See, no, that is it got I've, me right off the bat. I've heard too. it gets a lot better, but like, it didn't grab me. And I hear, I I hear that that. I've heard the rumor 
<laughs> that the season's going to end with Booster Gold. And I'm like, fuck. I'm going to get back <laughs> into this show. Now you have to. Damn it. Uh, you, said the, Legends... you said the one thing. <laughs> Legends, to me, is like just kind of a natural progression from The Flash. Like it's, mm-hmm. and, I mean, I guess it's not as happy as The Flash generally is. Um, but it's... It is basically for me what it is. It's it's kind of like a little Avengers or a little Justice that. League week every week. So it's it's cool, and I really like um, Snark. Um, I, he, he's, I, he's so good. He's so yeah. good at being a villain. Yeah, and and I really like, and I, I'm a sucker for when you when you give me a story where villains Turn good. are are trying to be I good or or I'm a sucker for, not even. Yeah. Okay, because they're not trying. They're, these these villains aren't even trying, but they're doing something on the side of good. Mm-hmm. So that like I'm um I wa- I watch Once Upon a Time, which isn't really a proud thing to say these days. But <laughs> the early se- I've, the early I've seasons watched four seasons of Once Upon a Time. So so you gave up? After no, it's just four? that was the last season on Netflix. Oh okay. So here's my so, Once Upon a Time story. Go ahead. Let's hear it. The fourth season of Net of Once Upon a Time came on to to, to give you a sense of exactly where I where, how I feel about Once Upon a Time. Okay. Fourth season came on. My wife and I were flipping through Netflix. We both said, "Son of a bitch! Season four of Once Upon a Time is on. God damn it! My night is ru- our night is ruined. Are we putting it on? <laughs> yes. We busted out the booze." <laughs> And we got on Twitter, and we were just like, yeah, we're doing this. We're going to hate watch the hell out of this. So so where did it go? Did you enjoy the first season? I don't... <sighs> but th- what I was... So you guys never... You just hate watch it from season one on? From episode one, season one. It has been... Here's what I'll say. Here's, my, here's how I feel about Once Upon a Time. I think it is the best hate watch... <laughs> that I've maybe ever have ever had. Wow, that's like uh... I enjoy watching it and complaining about it and making fun of it so much that it's probably brought me more joy than some shows that I liked. That's funny. I uh, we used to do a podcast that I passed off to other people um, that are hosting it now. Like they've they've reworked it. Um, at, to it's like what it's we call it oh it the unofficial once upon a time podcast now it's called once upon a wine and the team out west is hosting it they and um and uh so so i used to talk about this show every week and we never were uh me and my buddy mike we never were ones to like if it was a bad episode we 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 talk about mm-hmm. it we say this is bad um Team West Coast, they've done a uh, a parody of that show, um, and a successful rock opera of that show, uh, like a one hour rock opera movie, and to the point where uh, Sean McGuire, who plays Robin Hood, mm-hmm. um, has talked to them um, and introduced them to Lana Perelli. Okay, per, I think uh, the Evil Queen. Sure. And she is a fan of the rock up. Right. So like they have a lot of like they they have reasons to where like they'll talk about it. And sometimes like I guess if it's a really bad episode, they get kind of honest about it. But I listen to it sometimes when I'm producing the podcast and I say, I ha- I just want to ask these guys if like they really love it still, because I'm I'm where where you are. All right. I guess have been since season one where I am watching it. And it's just awful. It's so bad, <laughs> but it's so much fun to just sh- to just destroy it and just like pull it apart. Oh man, that is like, that is interesting. I, That's a good. Co- I've never see. I watch season five now, and it's me like just rolling my eyes, saying, "I don't. Why am I watching this? Like I'm hating it, but not, I'm not having fun." Hating I've it. always I love hating. Once upon a time, I need to like, watch an episode with you. There's oh my god. Well, okay. Tell me if you remember this moment. Do you remember during the amazingly terrible uh, Frozen arc? (laughs) Okay. When she summons, like, the Frost Giant? Yes. You have to go back and rewatch that. Because it's amazing. (laughs) Because the Frost (laughs) Giant, she summons this Frost Giant, and it's quote-unquote rampaging through the town? Yes. But it's not, but they don't, they can't afford to replace any of their <laughs> sets. So it's yeah. literally like traipsing over fences. 
<laughs> and just like it's like pushing things but they're going back into place so that they don't have to rebuild anything it's so terrible and it's so good well okay so uh my issue with like when they do things like that frozen is i don't know if you remember um i don't know it's, well, it's probably season two if i had to guess maybe season three but there's this little throwaway episode where it, I think it was the the Frankenstein episode. <laughs> that episode was but so dumb. There's a throwaway moment at the near the end of that episode, I believe, where the little boy Henry says, "You know, I've been flipping through this book, and and Frankenstein's not in it." So clearly setting up a much larger world mm-hmm. where things aside from fairy tale characters in this once a time once upon a time book were coming into Storybrooke. Well, and the interesting thing about that is this is that's one of the very few moments that I thought their writing was really clever because it's never stated outright but that's the world without color in the same way yes. that theirs is the world without magic. It might have been stated mm-hmm. outright but I thought that was really clever. Well, and that I don't, we'll say two, three years later, I'm like I'm angry about mm-hmm. because like you've given me Frozen, which okay, whatever. Like I know why you did it. You're giving me the Underworld now, and the so the Underworld storyline that they're doing right now is something that sh- I should be so into because my twelfth year, uh, my senior year in high school, I, I was like I took mythology class and I fell in love with mythology and and um. And I'll, I, quite honestly, like that is the in- inspiration to a lot of the stuff that I write is Greek mythology, and they are just screwing the pooch with I'm it. Act- like it's terrible. I'm actually preemptively really mad at that storyline. You should for be. real for you a should real be. specific reason. Let's what's what's that? Do you know the story of James Woods as Hades? <laughs> Well, I, I know that he he played Hades in the um in the cartoon. Did you know that he played him in all every Kingdom Hearts video game? Oh, I did not, including know that. the Japanese versions. Oh, Be- <laughs> and here's why: James Woods loves playing the character of Hades so much that he specifically said, "I want to be the only person to play that character." And and to that end, he learned Japanese. Oh, so he could play Hades in the Japanese tra- in the Japanese version of Kingdom Hearts, and he plays him in every Kingdom Hearts video game. And every animated series appearance of Hades was voiced by James Woods. That is so the awesome minute King- the trivia. minute Once Upon a Time was like, "Hey, we're bringing in Hades," and it wasn't James Woods. I was like, "Okay, you've crossed a line, Once Upon a Time. <laughs> you have crossed me." <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm telling you, like it's that if that won't be the only reason when you hate watch season five uh, that that you're gonna hate it because it's just it's like I said I'm hate watching it but I'm not hate watching it fondly at least maybe I need to drink during the episode oh maybe it's the best you really should be just knocking them back I you know what I would I would love to I, I want to I need to try to get convinced my team west uh coast out there to 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 do an episode of your podcast so that you guys get introduced and then get you on an episode of theirs so you could talk about once upon a time i would like to hear that dynamic of hate watching versus love watching yeah because i have i i have one nice thing to say about once upon a time and that is that the handling of captain hook has always been done fairly well that's a character, and yeah. it goes back to like I'm a sucker for a reformed villain. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm, like that. Exactly. I like that they've never, at least in the time that I watched, they never, as far as like the first four seasons, once he turned good, they never like pulled the trigger on him, being like, "Nah, I'm back, I'm back." Or if they did, okay. there was a reason behind it. Like there was always a twist. Yeah. I like that they committed to him being a good dude. Okay, so. Um... We, so that's what I loved about, for me, the story of Once Upon a Time in the beginning wasn't Emma's story. It wasn't the charming story. Mm-hmm. It was Rumpel's story. Like, he masterminded everything to to get to Storybrooke, mm-hmm. to find his son. And 
for me, when that wasn't the story anymore, because I don't think this is spoiling it for you, because I think it happened before season five. But when when um, Neil mm-hmm. and, and Bayfire yeah. are no longer part of the story, like that ends Rumpel's story. And for me, that's when it's just it it doesn't know what it wants to be and that's when you get i guess the frozen storyline yeah the and, thing, and the thing about that and rumple and like like i said how i like the stuff with captain hook rumple's exactly the opposite because they keep dragging him back to the boring place of him being like the evil mastermind and i'm mm-hmm. like i'm way more interested in what happens to that character after his master plan goes off Yes, I and like so, Regina was the evil queen. Was the character that I was like, I want to see her redeemed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which uh, my buddy Mike has an issue with. He's like, how can you see her be be redeemed when she slaughtered a village? <laughs> I'm like, all right. I mean, I can't argue that, but I I want to see her be good. <laughs> That's what I want. But like they they went back and forth mm-hmm. with they, her. They can't commit. And and now I mean uh, I don't think this is spoiling anything. She, I think they finally committed, but like you already kind of ruined the whole idea of her being a. You kind of had your shot, and I can't yeah. really buy it anymore. And and the same thing with Rumple. Like I, it, my my thing is, I want you to commit to one side. Like I don't care yes. if he's bad. Yeah. I don't care if he's good. Just commit, unless there's a really good reason, and don't make it. You can absolutely have them go back to to being bad, but don't do it literally within the same season mm-hmm. give it a couple seasons to, so that it's that more shocking yeah. so yeah once upon a wanna, time you don't want to rush it you don't want to run turn you don't want to turn your your baby faces heels too often and vice versa yes because then because yes. then you get the big show <laughs> oh my god that's i don't know so what's what's your time frame here because i don't want to keep you too late if you're getting a little tired eh, whatever Okay. All right. Uh, because there are a couple things that we hit on last time that the good people didn't get to hit here that I do want to um, talk to you about. And that's, um, A, uh, we'll save, I think, the juiciest part for, for last. So, A, your, and this may be brief, but your college experience, in major, specifically your major, just floored me oh, yeah. when you first talked about it. Please, um, go into to that. Uh, well, the short answer is I majored in comics. Um, the long answer is I majored in English with a specialization in... I forget what the ter- what I, the term ended up being, but it's comics. I majored in comics. Like, I studied I- graphic novels, and I studied the contrast between comics and film, and autobio comics, and all sorts of stuff like that. It was great. I loved it. And that I've never heard of before. So that what oh Ohio Ohio State Ohio State. So anyone out there that wants to like that's the college. If I knew that college existed ten years ago, I never would have dropped out. I would have gone there. Like that is such a cool, cool concept to just have classes that are so focused on a medium that's not taken very seriously, or, or at least back then, back, and, I mean, you're a couple years younger than me, but I would imagine even back when you were in college, it probably wasn't taking as seriously as it, as it is now. Eh, it, it was starting to, it was right on the cusp. Iron Man came out like my junior year. Okay. Okay. Um, so, and before we go on to the next thing, and I didn't ask you this last time, what do you do with a degree in comics? Uh, I am a copywriter. I work in advertising. Oh, I write okay. for a website okay. of a, of That's... a network where people can shop at home. I can't say which, I can't say which one, but I, I can't say which one, but I, there, I work for a home shopping network that's in Eastern Pennsylvania. You can kind of do the math. There's okay, only really enough. the one. Gotcha. Uh, um, so that's a interesting path from from comics to career or from college to career. It pays the bills and lets me podcast. Yeah, I mean that's at the end of the day. I mean that's how I feel about uh, my my day job, which I I spilled on the last one of my previous episodes that I I just did that I have to edit out because like I'm like hmm, 
not that I usually I used to not care, but like I guess in my thirties where I actually have a job with a pension, mm. I'm like, huh, maybe I don't want these worlds to cross anymore. Eh, my uh, bosses know what I do. My, my bosses know what I do, oh, and it's. I absolutely don't care that they know what I do. It's just that like if I if I happen to say. I don't really like my day job, which is, is not fair to say because it's new, but it's not what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like at the sure. end of the day, that's it's my and I think most people that work there are in the same boat. Like we don't want to be there. That's not we're there to pay the bills. What I want to do is sit around and talk or, you know, uh, write or, uh, you know, what's <clears throat> I found this out late in life. Like most people know that they want to be involved in movies when they're kids. Mm-hmm. I found out literally probably about six years ago that I was like, I kind of, I think I want to write and direct. Like I want to be, and I kind of tout myself as like the less famous thinner Kevin Smith <clears throat> because like, I like to write and I, I haven't filmed much, but like, I like to write, I like to podcast, uh, so like that's kind of like I look at him as kind of like my um my muse if you will. Um anyway, uh let's so you last time we did this, you had some very beautiful things to say about wrestling. I love professional uh, wrestling. Yeah. I think you can uh, tell I, listening to the podcast, I think you can tell. It yes, sneaks in. I, if if um and 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 that goes like that is what hooks me to your podcast like i I think this is in the episode 10 where i preview parts of the episodes that i did with everyone that 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 didn't fail and i I think it it, it was because i listened to it yeah okay okay so like your first episode had like i don't if it wasn't wrestling i mean maybe it was now after listening to to 20 episodes now i mean i I think i would have gotten hooked um, but the fact that it was wrestling is what grabbed my attention. So that's, that was the hook to bring me into, um, and I guess that wasn't what you were advertising. I just kind of no, looked at your feed cause the party, I, but I, I did it for, I did it cause I liked wrestling, but, but yeah. And, and that grabbed my attention and also helped that I kind of had like knew Noah to a point of like, I talked to him for a half hour or so at, at some event and um, so, like, you can tell in that episode for sure, in your WrestleMania episode, uh, which Fuck. was fantastic. I love that WrestleMania episode. That's gonna be a, that's that gonna be a was... tradition. Oh my god, I hope so. Like that is a neat little thing that you can easily do Just once a year, yeah. WrestleMania week. It's it's... Podcastomania. It's... I I hope you I hope we start maybe you start expanding and you do you know SummerSlam. Uh, episode. I've thought about it. That's all I'm gonna say. I've thought about it. It would be an uh, it's some... it would be an issue if I would want it to be sufficiently different than the WrestleMania episode. Mm-hmm. And I have a few ideas, and I could talk it's, to a few people about it. That but if, it's if you craft the episodes uh, right, you could probably get away with doing maybe three or four of them a year. I I uh, think I w- I think based... two is the, how many. I think I would want to just do. WrestleMania and SummerSlam. I think those would be the two. Yeah. And and that makes them that probably makes the most sense. Um and and I hope we see something this summer. Uh I will I will I I'm going to keep I'm going to work I'm going to work on it. I have an idea and I know I know specifically what I want to do. I don't want to say too much. That's fine. That's fine. I yeah, don't that's the worst like I have the bad habit of like saying too much and then I don't follow through with half the shit that I say. So that's I understand that completely. Um, so wrestling is is obviously plays a role in your life, um, and it, that's a common thread we have because I don't I, now so much. I'm not I don't watch it too often, but as a ki- as a teenager and a young adult, I watched it all the time. I was professionally trained, uh, so I used to do it, and, and and I have deep deep cuts in the wrestling world. Um, so share your love of wrestling. It was, it was, you said a lot of beautiful things about that and about, um, uh, Chikara, Chikara, Chikara specifically. Yeah. Just give me one second. I got to feed my cat real quick. <laughs> Not a problem. Uh, while, while you're doing that. So, um, why, and this is just a very bland way of saying it. Um, Chikara, uh, Jeff's love for Chikara kind of overlaps like the geekdom that, that 
uh, we're all part of. If you're listening to this, like you know, it, it, it sh- from what Jeff told me, like that's what I get. Oh yeah, very much so. And, and that's um, why those worlds. And I mean, I guess brass tacks. Like you're you're a storytelling guy. That's what wrestling is at the end of the day. You know, whether whether it's on the mic or or in the ring, like all it is is oh, telling yeah, a story. A and it's really there's a lot of overlap between and I've people more intelligent than I have talked more about this but um mm-hmm. specifically I'm going to give a shout out but um specifically okay. there's a guy named Jim McClure who's a great dude I love him he's a fantastic podcaster he does a show called Talking Tabletop it's a tabletop discussion oh my- podcast oh my- Jesus, it's funny that you say that because I made a joke with Jason Ashley about, you know, I, I wanted to do an after show called Talking Tabletop about your show. Wow, it already yeah. exists. Uh, yeah, Jason, uh, Jim McClure, great dude. Mm. Like, really fascinating interviewer. Um, he does a, he loves professional wrestling. His go to, he, he talks about the two great art forms are professional wrestling and tabletop. Okay, I, I can get on board with that. And he talks about, like, tabletop is, or wrestling is, if you, if he says any GM that wants to learn how to make combat more interesting should just watch professional wrestling. And he specifically has an interview with game designer John Wick. So if you okay. go on to Talking Tabletop, listen to that episode. It's I think it's part, okay. it's, I, he, it's a two-part interview, it's one part of it. They talk extensively about wrestling, and they do. They really get into the the overlap, and it's fascinating. Brief plug. That's all I got. <laughs> gotcha. Um, yeah, uh, John Wick sounds familiar. What, ga- what he games did, have, have he did? Um, the big one that he's known for is Legend of the Five Rings. He also does Seven uh, C. We played one of his games on the show. We played Cat. That's that's the one. That's why I know the name because he was because you played that played, game. That's another odd. Played cat okay. with a uh, Casey Van Heist <laughs> Hustle Cat themed. Because she made Hustle Cat, which is a wonderful game. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. So. Okay. Oh no! Go ahead. Sorry. I was I was gonna say so so let's talk. So, so do you watch WWE now, or are you pretty much just uh, a straight up? We uh, watch it. We Chicago. try. We watch it from time to time. We watch NXT pretty consistently, which is WWE's developmental well, and, program. And from probably what you've told me, definitely what one of my buddies who who is you know I, I came up with in in wrestling uh, a bit. Um, NXT is the from what I understand the superior product. Like I actually I need to find time to sit down and start watching it on a regular basis because I I feel like that almost sounds like what wrestling was. 10, 15 years ago in WWE where it's it's about the wrestling. I'd say even further back than that. Eh, yeah, probably about, I guess at this point, yeah, I guess at this point, 10, 15, like probably a solid 10, 12 years. I yeah. forget how far into the 2000, into the 10s we are. So in my mind, 10 <laughs> years ago was like 97, which is like prime attitude era crash TV. But like... <laughs> Isn't it like ten? So at this point, ten crazy? years ago would be like the SmackDown Six and Paul Heyman running yeah. SmackDown. So yeah, like a ten years ago. It's it's crazy just thinking about when I say ten years ago. Like I was an adult ten years ago. It's so it blows my mind to this day still. Anyway, go yeah, on. I, I like NXT a lot. It's it's kind of in the process of changing in ways that for some ways that are better and some that are worse. But that's a whole topic for another day. That's something that I can get into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can ramble about that for another day. Okay, that's yeah. I you know I, I I've I've set up the last this interview. Well, I, maybe I haven't set it up yet, but this interview probably you with Jeff, and then uh, my last guest. I think I, the way I want to uh, have your for you your official return to the show. That's like people have listened to the first one. Is like I want to stem it around like a big mm-hmm. wrestling event. I think. Because it just makes sense and just have like a full out wrestling discussion, um, but uh, yeah. So NXT is I'm gonna get I, I'm gonna try to get on board with it. I, I, maybe before bed I'll I'll turn on the old WWE Network and watch some NXT. Um, but let's Chikara is where where your beautiful words Chikara yeah it's my home away from home it's it's my heart Chikara is my heart it, it I love it so much. 
and and you know what's great and we we made this you know um we, we made this point last time too but um it's great because the guy who trained me is tom um reckless tom, reckless youth tom yeah, reckless carter. reckless youth tom carter is co-founder of yes the car? yes so, with, lightning, like, with lightning mike well, like, uh, with lightning mike quackenbush yes yeah so that like it's it was it's just one of those little things that like makes me smile about like wow me and jeff have kind of have that in common yeah i've never met tom carter but yeah he he founded he's a good dude he founded dude. this thing that is insanely close to my heart and he he trained me I'm kind of in forever that, in, in his debt world. for that yes I, yeah i mean with, without um for me without tom i wouldn't have gotten as far in in wrestling as i did um he he taught he is a great teacher like i don't i don't think he does it anymore no i think um, he's out of the business now i think yeah uh yeah and I, I, I like he was he was hanging along for a little while but he um i think he's like super i think he's into tabletop i i last saw him so so i met him because because i was the, back when i was a teenager like i was probably 18 maybe 20 years old um, I was working at Staples, and he um, he had left the WWE. I don't know if you know his full story, but he was in the f- farm system mm-hmm. for WWE. Um, and he was originally – do you remember um, uh, uh, Billy and Chuck? Yeah. With Rico? I do remember Rico. I remember Billy and Chuck. He was originally – he he was a, he, they wanted him to play the Rico part. Ooh, that would have been bad. Like, that would have been a waste. And, and he said no. He said I'm not. I I can't do that. Like that. Where do I go after that? Like where's my career after that? Um. And so he he said no to that. And then I and then he his wife got pregnant with her third child, I believe. And um. So he he I I guess when his development contract ended, he he just went back to the indies, and he started working at Staples, uh, just for some extra cash or whatever. And so that's where I met him, and that's how I got trained through him. And um, years later, when I was having my first kid, I believe, um, I worked at Staples again just to earn some extra cash. And he had come in to pick something up to to make like a, a fake award or something, I think for something tabletop related or at least RPG related. I don't know if it was tabletop. It may have been like a online game or something. But uh, he's very, I think, in. I mean, I guess if he's if if Chikara crosses that that world, he's very into it. Interesting. It's you know, I, I might blow your mind. I want to. I, I want to. I, I'll see if I can find his contact information, and I'll. I'm gonna see if see if you're interested in having him on as a guest. I mean, I'm not. I'm always. I'm always <laughs> looking for cool new people to play yeah. cool new games with. <laughs> I'll I'll see if I can find that contact info, and I'll. I mean, this is probably stuff that we should be talking about off air, but I'll see if I can hook something up. Anyway, go on about Chikara. Chikara Pro is magic. It's wonderful. They are uh, Chikara is a lucha libre promotion outside of located in Philadelphia. Um, they are. Let's see. I don't even know how to st- where to start with Chikara. Um, they, like I said, they're a lucha libre promotion. They 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 train in a wide variety of styles. They're they're a lucha libre promotion that's connected to a wrestling school called the Wrestle Factory. Uh, the Wrestle Factory right. is noteworthy because is probably most noteworthy because for two reasons. Two of the people that didn't necessarily train at the Wrestle Factory, but like were trainers there and like worked there for a long time and trained there in a long time. Um, are a guy named, at the time, he was called Claudio Castagnoli. Now he's called Cesaro. He's in the WWE. Okay. Um, yes. He's amazing. He was in Chikara for a very long time. And then um, a woman named her, a woman named Sarah Del Rey worked for Chikara for a very long time. Currently she trains the, NX, she's the head trainer uh, she's the head women's trainer and, and, and at, at the WWE Performance Center, and she's sort of okay. responsible for the revolution in women's wrestling in a lot of ways, which is something that's very close to my heart. Like, and so they both kind of came out of they both kind of came out of this uh, the right like, and so they're both kind of very strongly associated. But when yeah, I'll tell you what when re- when women's wrestling is done right, it is 
some of the best stuff. Well, it's being done right right now. Like they've really in the last couple years, they've and a part of that's hiring Sarah Delray to train them because she was the best. She was one of the best women wrestlers in the world, and now she's now she's training a new generation to be that good. But um, yeah. So Chikara, they are connected to the Wrestle Factory. They exist primarily to showcase students of the Wrestle Factory. But that's not really – and, and uh, because of that, they sort of showcase a very international style. They do a lot of lucha. They do a lot of Japanese strong style. They do a lot of, like, the British catch uh, catches catch can wrestling. Um, and what makes them really special is Chikara as a promotion specializes in a very unique brand of storytelling where it's very um, – firstly, it's very – it's family-friendly. Kids get in free. Mm-hmm. There's no swearing uh-huh. at a Chikara show. The fans, them, cool. like the fans, get really into it, which is wonderful. Like they chant "Holy poop!" Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> oh my god, you didn't tell me that last oh, time. That works my heart cool so happens, much. It's holy poop, holy poop. Oh my god, that um, makes oh that that warms my heart. It, yeah, it's family friendly. Um, so they um, let's see what else. They're very comic book inspired. They take a lot of cues from comic book storylines and from superhero cartoons. And like, um, there is there they like there are superpowers and there are there's a magic hammer that if you are worthy you can become imbued with the spirit of the Estonian thunder frog. <laughs> and there is uh, there was time travel one time. Oh, that's the one that you were telling me about last time. Yeah, and, and, and that is. Go ahead. I'm, I, um, go. one time a guy got one of their wrestlers. Eddie Kingston is an amazing wrestler. He does a spinning back fist, and he calls it the back fist to the future. And one time in 2011, he delivered a, to a guy a back fist to the future, and sent him to the year 2015, where he collected a sports almanac traveled back to the past, used it to win matches, created a whole paradox thing, and there was a whole convoluted time travel saga. And I mention that, and I, I'm very specific about those dates, because at their last show of 2015, in the, middle of, in the middle of the show, the lights turned out, they turned back on, this wrestler, Archibald Peck, was standing in the ring, confused. And it was shocking, because he had been <laughs> murdered earlier in the season. <laughs> Oh, he grabbed me that and he. Time. They were oh. debuting what they they call like a yearbook, which is just a collection of like storylines, matches, all that kind of stuff. He grabs the only copy of the 2015 Chikar yearbook, runs off stage, and has not been seen since. Presumably because he's traveled <laughs> back to 2011, closing the circle. <laughs> that see, it's that. That's the kind of stuff that. I miss for it's wrestling. It's amazing. Like that, it's so good. Yeah. yeah, they do a lot of like that uh, kind of stuff, but they also just do really amazing. Like they sometimes get, they do a lot of comedy, a lot of like slapstick. Um, two of their wrestlers, maybe my my probably my two favorite wrestlers in the world, are a tag team called the Osirian Portal. They are the funky Pharaoh Amasis, who's a dancing mummy, or a dancing Pharaoh, <laughs> I should say. He's not been mummified. Okay. And Ophidian okay. the Cobra, who is a who is the venomous mas- he's the uh, master of snake style lucha. He wears a snake themed lucha mask. Together, okay. they do. Uh, what happens is, Amasis will pick up Ophidian in like a wheelbarrow. So he's got his legs wrapped around his waist, and his hands are free. Ophidian, being a snake, will start to uh, shimmy back and forth, and he will hypnotize his opponents. <laughs> the power of <laughs> hypnosis <laughs> and they they do they do these really great comedy spots and sometimes they get a little bit of a bad reputation for being like the comedy promotion but they also just do really like breathtaking amazing like wrestling of all different varieties and like they do some of the best wrestling i've ever seen in addition to these amazing storylines and comedy stuff and the other thing that's really special about chikara is um there are no weight distinctions and there are no gender distinctions. So everyone competes against everyone and everyone is treated as an equal competitor. And this is ama- oh, it's amazing. Cool. So you get to see like there's great intergender wrestling, there's great women's wrestling. Their current champion 
is Princess Kimberly, who is the princess that saves herself. She, she, like yeah, that. she's amazing. She's so good. But like, that she's, is, um, I like the idea of the intergender gender stuff because that is something that when we were like running ours full time, like we, we talked about and everyone was like, no one wants to see a dude beat up a girl. I'm like, what? Well, but who cares? Like, my, it's my wrestling. Response to like, that, and it's I always love. I kind of actually always love when people say that because I don't get a lot of opportunities to say this to other people. But anytime somebody says that to me, all I say back is, "You know, it's fake, right?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's, and, and like the the idea like of. See, for me, again, I, I it goes back mm-hmm. to story. And I, I, I always liked playing the bad guy. And um, so, like, I was like, listen, there is a great story here where I'm the bad guy. And, like, I initially refused to, to partake in something as silly as wrestling a girl because I don't I, – because of that very, like, oh, you know, even I know you're not supposed to hit a, hit a girl or whatever. And then it just – you know, it's it, – it, it ends in an epic storyline where I get like I she mm-hmm. goes over she wins like that's how you do, and I mean in a in a federation that's not doing it consistently mm-hmm. that's how you do it and like oh it, I it I that's another now I need to uh, get they have a monthly thing yes right? they have where, Jakartopia where, yeah, you can go yeah. to jakarapro dot com they have a link to it um it's seven ninety nine a month. They have like they have years and years of events put up there. They have their first ever show, I think, is up there, where you can uh, see Tom Carter and Mike Quackenbush wrestle in a tag team match. I think CM Punk is on that show. Oh, like wow. it's, I think CM Punk and Colt Cabana versus, and there's one other person. Oh. I think it might be Ace Steel versus Quack, Tom Carter, and someone else. Oh. Was it Don Montoya? I think it was. I think it was. Yes, I believe it was. Don Montoya is another guy that like helped train. Yeah, he's um, a good guy too. Oh man, that's... yeah. They have years of events. You can. They have a live stream that just runs that you can just watch it. They add new shows every day. Like it's like and it's and the first week is free. You um then it's seven ninety nine a month, which is super cheap to watch great wrestling. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that's. Uh... I said I said it last time and I and I didn't sign up yet but I do I need to I need to jot it down and remember to sign up because it's that sounds like like that is how I would run a federation. It's wonderful. It's uh, wonderful. Or, I love or, it with every fiber of my being. It is how it should be like because you should have a mm-hmm. lot of fun with it especially if you're marketing it to kids and that's at the end of the day like it's, it's kind of what wrestling who wrestling mm-hmm. is for. You know, I mean obviously there's adults you and i included that enjoy wrestling um and i mean i think our generation of adults are never going to truly be adults like we're always going to be Uh a kid at heart i think um i mean i guess check check back with me in 30 (laughs) years but um so like so wrestling now i guess is for everyone but if it's fun like it's got to be fun like that to to Uh hold my attention like my favorite moments of wwe were always when um, Shawn Michaels was around because he was heavily involved with with the writing, um, and and it was always just fun stuff like like all, all the DX stuff. Every generation of DX, I always smiled about, especially like when it was Born Again Shawn Michaels and and your run of the mill Triple H. Like that stuff just always made me smile. One of my favorite things ever, and I don't know if you watched it back then, but was. Uh, when when Eric Bischoff said something, or Triple H was was egging Sean on and said, you know what, Eric Bischoff said you don't even know what the meaning of controversial, and and he just goes on this tangent and kicks some dude or says, hey, what's your name? And he goes, Stan. He sweet chin music, Stan. See, I just kick Stan. That will go down as one of my favorite moments in WWE history. Like it's just something about it. It's the, the guy that plays Stan in that segment. Is currently wrestling on NXT. I'm so glad that you know that. I just happened to, I, that's is, just a piece of trivia I happen to know. Now his name is the Perfect is, Ten, Ty Dillinger. <laughs> I, um, I, you know what? The, is there anything else about Chikara um, that you want to uh, Let's see. I, 
could talk about I think the only other thing um they do they do they the there are two other things that I'm going to praise for Chikara okay is they do my favorite wrestling event of the entire year which is the King of Trios tournament in September it is a 16 team trios tournament so it's three man tags which is their specialty okay um they do a 16 team trios tournament every year and they bring in teams from all over the world. This year they're bringing in the Sendai Girls, who are these legends of Japanese women's wrestling. Last year they brought in stars of the TV show Lucha Underground, which is huge, as well as the Bullet Club, who are like the biggest names in like Japanese wrestling because they're the big American heels. Yeah. Yeah, they bring yeah, they brought the Bullet Club, they brought in Lucha Underground. This year they're bringing in the Sendai Girls. A tri- King of Trios is, a, and it's a three day. It's three days of the best wrestling you'll see. It's amazing. And the other thing I want to say is, uh, I mentioned this the last time we recorded, but um, there's a storyline where the two things Let's cross over, where Chikara was purchased by an evil corporation. They were doing the classic wrestling bad guy, um, <laughs> like evil yeah. corporate overlord thing. Except they crossed a line and pissed off the evil corporation, and they shut the company down. Like, they canceled shows, they refunded tickets, they went all in. Like, they just literally were like, no, this company's dead. And for a year, Chikara was dead. Except for one of their wrestlers held rallies around Philadelphia to save Chikara. That is... It's that kind of storytelling and commitment that that it just warms my heart. Mm-hmm. I can't say it enough. Like you, your love for this uh, promotion and, I, and it it makes me want to love it. Uh, they're doing an event. I think it'll probably have been passed by the time this episode goes out. But um, May seventh, they have a big show coming up that I'm really excited about. They're doing what is called the Infinite Gauntlet, which. If, which for comic book reference like that's amazing <laughs> um, they're doing the infinite gauntlet which is essentially like a royal rumble style match 33 entrants go in every I think 88 seconds or something and like oh 88 can't be a, a, like a because ra- like it's picked the that infinity purpose, symbol didn't... turned over twice and... okay yeah. so it's every 88 seconds 33 entrants are going in it's top rope battle royal or you can get pinned or submit oh well, that's and it's, cool that's yeah, interesting. and it's the winner gets a essentially a money in the bank contract, a golden opportunity which you can cash in any time for a title shot. So they're doing this big event, and I'm super excited about it. Um, now, now, do you go to these events, or, or do you just watch them on? Do they stream them live? We try thing? to go. I try to go to at least they do. They tend to do like two shows in Philly a month. Like they'll do like two a day show and a night show on what Saturday in Philly. At the Wrestle Factory, okay. which is their school, we try to go to at least yeah. one of those every month. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's you know that might be something that I need to go and check out because my niece and nephew, and I'm gonna assume that they're still into it, but they got into wrestling hardcore, and like when they started talking to me about Gold Dust and Stardust, specifically Gold Dust, like my ears lit up. I'm like, you know who Gold Dust is? You gotta be kidding me! And uh, my son's starting to get there's into a, it. Uh, I don't know if you saw bit. it. I don't know if you've watched it, but there's a thing you need to watch on the network. It's one match. Um, it is the Shield, who were the big bad guys trio in WWE. They had yeah. three of they had the tag titles in the United States Championship. Okay. They were challenging. There was a whole storyline with the Authority, um, and the match is is two members of the Shield versus Gold Dust. And this is before he became Stardust. So it was Gold Dust, Cody Rhodes, his brother. Okay. And because okay. there was a third guy in the shield that was gonna threaten to like disqual like cause a DQ and cause him to lose and their jobs were on the line. That's the important thing. If if Gold okay. Dust and Star- and Cody Rhodes won, they would get their jobs back and win the tag titles. If they lost, okay. they would lose their jobs. They, but the other thing that would happen is their father Dusty Rhodes would also lose his job with the WWE. So he uh, accompanies them to the ring. So it's literally Cody Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes, and Gold Dust versus this evil heel faction. That's and it's, amazing. I cried. 
All right. Yep, that's going to be watched tonight. <laughs> that's definitely going to be watched. Um, all right. Uh, before we we leave, I'm going to go full circle to Tabletop and say, have you ever checked out this site, uh, artisandice.com? Yes, I have. Oh, my God. I literally, like, I was flipping back and forth between that and my email uh, when I was waiting for you to say you were either on your way back or you were back and ready to do the show. And somehow, I like, someone I saw someone on Twitter like say, "I got my my mammoth I tusk." I think it was Jason. Dice. Ashley, like, actually, what? I think. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. I think it was him. Uh, so yeah, yeah, his boss mm-hmm. or something got him one. And um, so I, I I went on their website and I literally spent an hour looking at dice on their site and contemplating was like, can I justify spending hundreds of dollars on something? <laughs> Uh, God, that's, I, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. And, and that was the reason why, like I said, oh, I need five <laughs> minutes to set up because I was, you were filling out the order form. Yeah. Look at that. I, I was you to get a full set of dice in mammoth, uh, Tusk is like $2,500. Well, I think they also, are they the ones that also do the literal star dice where you I can get the dice so. made out of a fucking meteorite? I should have asked if I, I can swear on this I podcast because I've been swearing all night. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> this is uh, uh, I, every, even episodes that don't have cursing are tied explicit, just in case. Yeah, you can um, get dice made out of a fucking meteorite. That is cool. That is super. Because I'm looking. Uh, I, I was looking. I was like, because I'm trying to come up with like ideas for. Um, not. I'm getting married in two years, but I'm starting to percolate. Like, what do I want to get my groomsmen and like. Or, or my best man. I'm like, oh, my best man might like some dice. And, like, I was like, well, $2,500 is a lot out of my price range. But a single D20 might be good. Awesome mm-hmm. stuff on that site. Free plug to artisandice.com. Um, very cool stuff. But, um, all right, Jeff, uh, throw out some plugs for yourself. Uh, where can people find you? What you got going on? Okay, I have stuff. one plug for somebody else's thing, and then I'll do my own plugs. Um, I've been thinking okay. about this because they – or a thing that means a lot to me is um, if you like tabletop podcasts, I'm going to recommend my favorite, which is two podcasts. They're related. They're on the same network. They're sister or sister podcasts. Um, they are one shot and campaign. They are tabletop podcast. They're the podcast that inspired me to do a podcast. Basically um, okay. one shot is one shot. They do a different game every month and campaign is a long form campaign set in the star Wars universe. They are. Oh my God! Oh, you you've got to listen to campaign. You're gonna love. Like, oh, it's so good. It's a wonder. It, they're wonderful. Their hosts, uh, James D'Amato and Cat Cool, are the loveliest people. Um, yeah, they're amazing, and you've uh, you got to check them out. They're so good. They're they're specifically uh, one shot is specifically a lot of improv is a lot of improvisers and like theater people. So it's very hewed towards like performance. And that's a like, and that's why I really like it. Is it's really conscious of like what makes a good, entertaining show, in addition to like showcasing these great games. And campaign is a long form campaign, like that's telling the story over weeks and weeks and years and years, and it's so good. It's amazing. I love them both. I was about to ask, how can I know I'm looking at the right campaign podcast? But I'm going to assume that the Star Wars font. <laughs> Uh, uh, is, I think is the if you just at. search campaign podcast, it's the first result. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, it came up. The the, the cover art is. Uh, I assume it looks like a starry background with the word yes. campaign yes. podcast and the four the four uh, aliens along with the clone trooper. So well, we're just going to subscribe oh, to that right They're, now. It's, it's my favorite. Uh, that's uh, that sounds. It's funny because I, I didn't know I loved Star Wars as much as I did until the Force Awakens trailer, which is I had, I, I, I don't, had a similar experience. <laughs> it's uh, I'm gonna sum mine up because every time I bring it up, it goes on for a half hour. I'll sum it up as quick as possible. I uh, I got introduced to the Star Wars original Star Wars trilogy uh, by my uncle when I was a kid, probably eight years old, we'll say. Uh, so I have very fond memories of Star Wars. Uh, and watching it with my uncle. Um, never really got into the extended universe. Uh, don't remember getting excited or not excited for the prequel trilogy. I do remember not liking the prequel trilogy when I initially watched it, except for the third one was, you know, it had its moments. Um, 
so when when they announced force awakens i'm like oh that's cool like we're gonna get more star wars and watching the first trailer i'm like all right this is star wars i like it. like this seems like it could be a good movie it's definitely not the prequels and it wasn't until the it, it goes black and cuts to the john williams score and cuts to the millennium falcon flying that and as as i talk every time i talk about it still watch the movie i own the movie i get goosebumps talking about it and watching it i got goosebumps and and watching the we'll say the last 30 seconds of that trailer or whatever it was and i was like i love star wars like i didn't know how much i i I mean i i knew i loved star wars because i'd been partially because i'd been listening to campaign for a year at this point and i'd been watched i'd watched them a million times i love star wars with all my heart it didn't it was one of those it's one of those things that it doesn't you know it doesn't hit you how much something like that means to you until i was sitting in the theater and it went black, and the fucking words, yes. like, in a long time ago, yes. in a galaxy far, far away. I remember I was sitting there, and I'm sitting with my wife, and we just both, like, reached out and grabbed each other's hands and started, and it was just, like, tears, where it's just like, I was, okay, I'm gonna cry now. Like, this is a moment where I'm gonna cry. Yeah, I, I mean, and I know that if I was seeing that movie in a different circumstance i would have shed like it was tears it just it just hit, and it, it was out of nowhere where it just hit me just seeing those words on screen in that context i was yes. like fuck i mean I, I had seen star wars oh yeah i had as well theaters. but i don't know what it was i don't the, know what it was the remake but or not the remake um yeah i well i guess it was well, not the remake whatever it was the, yeah. whatever george lucas did to it i saw those ones in the theater but you're right like seeing and and, and i saw the yeah i saw them in the theater in and theater. i didn't have that reaction and i definitely no i don't even remember watching a trailer i mean i guess that's what 15 mm-hmm. years ago now i don't remember watching a trailer for any of the prequel trilogy movies and getting goosebumps and saying oh my god it's star wars I'm just, I'm so happy we live in a world. And, okay, oh, God, this is going, we're going to try to wrap this up in the next six minutes here. Uh, Rogue One, what was? What are your thoughts on I seeing that trailer? Dope. That's really all I have to say on it. I, I think it looks pretty dope. I I need to rewatch this trailer because I'm literally the only one. I thought my one of my, my best friend who was super critical of movies, I thought he was going to feel the way I did. Where I'm like, I saw the trailer. And I'm like, I don't, I well, don't know. I don't here's know the thing. I, if you didn't love the trailer for Rogue One, because I have I have exactly one reservation about Rogue One, is okay. that Rogue One is telling the story of the group of people that stole the plans for the Death yeah. Star and delivered it to the blockade runner. Mm-hmm. I am really into that story. I think that's a great story. One of the reasons I think it's a great story is that my favorite podcast is a long form tabletop narrative of the story of the people that stole the planes of the Death Star and delivered it to the blockade. Runner. Oh shit. That's so I'm literally cool. watching this being like That's... this isn't campaign. You're not trust <laughs> Valentine. <laughs> um that's that's kind of amazing. That is really amazing. I um I don't know. I think the problem is I watched it on my phone and got interrupted a few times while I was watching it. Um, I need to go back and watch that trailer because that story, I knew what the story was before watching the trailer. Um, and, and I, I love that idea. I love the, I, I love the idea of seeing Darth Vader again. You know, you're going to see him again. I love the idea of seeing the Death Star again, the original. So like every, it has the makings of, of being one of my favorite movies. Like it just, it's like the heist Star Wars dope. movie just sounds good. Um, so I need to rewatch the trailer because I am literally, I think the only person that said, meh, that's fair. Like, I don't know anyone else that said it. I, I'm going to re I'm going to try to rewatch it and, and give a better opinion. Cause I, I have to love it. Like there's something that I missed something <laughs> when I was distracted. I had to have, uh, anyway. Um, so, uh, go on with your other okay. plugs. Like, yeah. we, we cut off your No, plugs. no, no, it's fine. That was real. I just wanted to get that in there because yeah. uh, if you're passionate about tabletop like I'm passionate about tabletop, I think you're going to enjoy those shows. Anyway. You are you're setting me on a path of binge binge listening some uh, more D&D podcasts like I did with you and Jason's podcast. Anyway, um, I'll plug my things now. Um, uh, you can find the show on SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Party of One Podcast. 
um, iTunes. We're on iTunes. We are on Google Play now, which is exciting. Um, I think that's it on Twitter, Party of One Pod, Facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. Um, I think that's it. If you want to hear me talk rant about wrestling, I'm on Twitter. My personal Twitter is uh, at Dex Dynamo. Um, yeah, I I would recommend follow. I I love following uh you on Twitter. Whether it's the wrestling stuff, I I I need to seek out the once upon it. Like I need to pay attention when season five drops on Netflix so I can watch your hate. Oh, you'll hate see comments. it. He'll be there. Trust me. <laughs> um, is there anything else that I need to plug? I don't think so. Uh, and I implore uh, anyone out there that, that wants to uh, get into tabletop uh, podcasting. Um, uh, I think, I think party one podcast is a good way to do it because it's not um, long form campaigns. It's a bunch of one shots and, and start off with episode 19 is 19. And what you, 14 was kingdom. You said kingdom. They're the two episodes. I think you should start off with um, because both, both of them are, just really good story mm-hmm. uh and, and really fun uh well the kingdom is really fun um uh, 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 our radios are dying mm-hmm. did i say that you right right uh that one is um emotional I, I guess it could be emotional to people i don't I, I it's hard to say what it's not comedy that's for, i mean there's comedic moments it's it's just a heartwarming story that's what we'll go with very heartwarming story um and and to hear uh, Jeff and Strix, Strix. Strix. yeah, uh, perform that story, and um, it, it was it was a lot of fun listening to and, 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 and that story. And um, it, I yeah, start with those two, nineteen, fourteen, in any order, um, and, and then at some point listen to eighteen, the Doctor Who episode with me, because uh, you know self shameless self promotion, no. you know, you got, you got plugged. <laughs> Uh, all right, Jeff, thank you for taking now two additional hours on top of the one that you already dedicated that we lost uh, and coming back on the show. You my are pleasure. truly a super friend. My, my pleasure. Friend. Um, and check him. Check Jeff out on his podcast, Party One Podcast. Check him out on Twitter at Party One Pod, as you said. Um, you can find us on Twitter at That Entertains. You can find me on Twitter at HHWST. Uh, of course, go to iTunes, subscribe to the show, subscribe to Party One Podcast, obviously. Drop some reviews and ratings, if you will. Uh, it helps us get shown to more people. So do that for both podcasts, obviously. Not just mine, not just Jeff's. Five stars is what I want to tell you to do. Do what you want, but five stars is appreciated. Uh, and you've been listening to Everything is Awesome right here on AwesomePodcast.com. There it is. That's the conclusion to the Jeff Stormer interview. I can't thank him enough for coming back on the show. Um, I know I've said it over and over and over again ever since episode 10, the celebration of failure. I can't believe that was seven weeks ago, seven shows ago. Um, But these guys, uh, Jeff and Joe and Jason Ashley, uh, they all stepped it up to be uh, super friends to the truest degree that you can be a super friend. Uh, they did it, man. Um, so uh, big round of applause. We're going to get Jason Ashley soon. We are. We're actually tonight. This this episode released on Wednesday, June 8th. Uh, tonight, me and Jason, we're going for round three. Yes, we're going for round three of our interview. Uh, hopefully we get it this time. Uh, otherwise, there's going to be a lot of alcohol drinking. Drinking? Drunken. Drinking? Drunken? I'm going to drink. I'm going to drink. Um, so, all right. You're all still listening. You know, I, and I'm going to put off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bury the lead so hard about why the guest we booked and why it's important for these iTunes reviews and stuff. So it's, I, you know, I, I, the last interview that I did, which is, is going to be who I'm talking about after this, um, I kind of like discussed how I, I do the show differently than some other long form interview podcasts. Um, some shows out there, they, uh, that do this format, they usually kind of, um, turn on the recorder and kind of go. Uh, and then they post interview, record an intro and an outro, uh, and wrap it up nice and, and, and neatly with a bow. Um, as you can tell when we do these interviews, I tend to, 
hit the switch and I intro the show. I'd like to give a nice proper intro um, to my guests and then um, and then just kind of end the show from there. That's kind of the, the traditional broadcaster in me. Um, but as uh, the show has progressed, I, I always find like the need to have a postscript about these interviews. And I, I try to do it in a commercial or in um, a part two intro or a part one outro. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's whatever, you know, uh, I love to talk. If you listen to the show, you know that. And I know here's we, we've kept you over an hour at this point. I'm not going to bury the lead anymore. Because of all the awesomeness from the super friends, from the whiners, from all of you, um, I was able to book somebody who um, I went out on a limb and contacted and and mind blown that they said yes. Uh, last night, just before the interview started, I was sick to my stomach because I was so nervous about this interview. Um, and, and afterwards, like I, I felt great about it. I really enjoyed talking to this person. Uh, in a few weeks you're going to listen to, and if you follow me on Twitter, you know, you're going to listen to an interview I had with the one, the only, the very talented, the very funny Aaron McGathy. Oh God. I am so happy that interview happened. Um, she is someone that I idolize in the live performance slash podcasting world. Um, and talking to her last night was such, such a joy. Uh, I almost think I'm probably going to record a bonus episode, uh, for you, for, for me, I guess. Uh, but if you guys want to listen to it, just talking about how the experiences with doing my first major interview like that. Um, so that's going to be June 29th that we released that interview. Uh, so, uh, that's all. And if we keep on doing all this sharing of the show and whatnot, that's the kind of cool things that can happen. So, uh, I couldn't have had that interview with Aaron McGathy without the super friends, without the whiners. So thank y'all. We'll see you next time right here. Uh, only on awesomepodcast.com.